everyone. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Satyan Dekha for this uh, opportunity. And I'll be talking on managing posterior segment penetrating injury. So the incidence of ocular trauma is 4 to 10 per thousand population, men 5 times more than women. And just to give you a perspective, non-whites more than whites, work related is the highest, followed by sports and home related, 8% bilateral and 15% had a post, uh, it's post trauma. In this study from India from Gwalior, there are 1600 cases, 10.5% were bilateral, 80% were male, 61% urban and age 50% after 11 to 30 years. So it affects the most uh, productive years of our life. The common agents mean stone, wood, iron, chemicals, thermal injuries in males and chemicals in females. 53% involved the cornea, 25% lens, 14% was the posterior segment uh, involvement. These are some of the figures from LBPI, but I'll just skip through. So usually by a sharp and pointed instruments like needle sticks, pencils, uh, knives, arrows, pens, glass, most common due to wood, metal and stone, most occur during chopping or cutting wood, associated with professions such as farming. Globe rupture in nine adults may occur during motor vehicle accident, sports activity, assault or other trauma, sometimes gunshot and stab wounds. We should be particularly suspicious of eye injuries caused by a metal striking the metal, that is a hammer and chisel which is very common in India. One third of eye injuries happening in children and adolescents are sports related. So the mechanical effect is there can be laceration of the conjunctiva, corneal lacerations, vitreous hemorrhage, rupture of the globe, retinal tears and detachment, scarring which leads to cataract and glaucoma and IFBs can also be seen. Infection we just heard Dr. Narendran's talk on and ophthalmitis. Sympathetic ophthalmitis is another concern and visual impairment and enucleation is also possible. Pain may be difficult to assess due to augmentation. Pain may not be severe initially in sharp injuries. Vision is usually greatly decreased. Diplopia present usually is due to entrapment uh, with associated orbital blower fractures. Diplopia, diplopia may be due to traumatic cranial nerve palsy from associated head injury. Monocular diplopia may be due to associated lens dislocation or subluxation. So do's and don'ts, this is mostly as a first aid, do not touch the eye, do not remove the object out of the eye, do not put any pressure on the eye, do not check extra ocular movements, reassure the patient and advise against rubbing or in moving their eye. So these are some of the gruesome pictures which, uh, you know, the spectrum which we can come across, or it may be more subtle here, uh, you can see inferiorly the choroid uh, shining through, uh, which may be an occult rupture, it could be a cross prolapse, Anterior segment may be involved, there may be vitreous hemorrhage, uh, transactional retinal detachment may be seen, and end of the nidus. So uh, the rupture is mostly a full thickness eyeball wound due to a blunt object, whereas laceration is due to a sharp object, which is like a penetrating injury. Ruptures usually occur at the sites where the sclera is thinnest, at the insertion of the extraocular muscles, at the limbus, and around the optic nerve. Sharp objects or those traveling at high velocity may penetrate the globe directly and there can then be retained IOMPs. IOMPs will be covered subsequently. So first is to put nice shield, take the detailed medical records. The history is very important because you want, sometimes the history is not very clear. Uh, time, place, nature of injury, what was the instrument being used, where, what kind of, uh, met, you know, the, whether it was a metal which was being used, a glass, magnetic, wood. So assess the vision, RAPD is sometimes very useful in these cases because sometimes patient uh, does not have a, a vision because of vitreous hemorrhage or high femur. And ocular motility can be checked in orbital blower fractures but do not check in cases of obvious rupture of the eyeball. On slit lamp, uh, we must examine the limbus for uh, the rupture, high femur, iris translimination defects, focal cataract, jelly roll chemosis and obviously indirect ophthalmoscopy should be tried. Always assess the uninvolved eye for unrecognized injuries. CT scan, a fine axial and coronal view uh, to, look, uh, to see for orbital wall fracture, post, uh, possible posterior sclerosis rupture, IORPs, treatment, nil by mouth, and IV antiemetics, IV analgesics, broad spectrum antibiotics, no ointments, no eye pad, plastic eye shield, thickness profile axis. Urgent primary repair is the goal of treatment in these cases. Rarely primary enucleation and evisceration uh, has to be done. Dr. Pritham will probably show us some cases which he was able to salvage with badly damaged globes. 
overall visual prognosis is very guarded. Some delayed complications are sympathetic ophthalmia and endophthalmitis. I won't go into the details. So these are some of the gruesome uh, injuries. So if there is a tissue loss, you explore the wound thoroughly, find all tissues, and this is as far as the external aspect is concerned. Direct repair can be done, tissue advancement, advancement flaps, replace in layers. So some of the myths and facts. So no light perception is synonymous with permanent blindness. It is not the case because initially traumatic optic neuropathy is another component which needs to be looked into. Sometimes these patients if given uh, IVMP can get PL back. Hypotony is synonymous with thysis bulbi. Only little is gained and much time, effort, money will go into surgical repair. Most of the damage occurs during impact and surgeon has little role to play. So all these are basically myths. Vitreous hemorrhage can be followed up. Blind cryopexy to zone 3 injuries prevents RD. So this is again a very uh, important point, uh, you know, which uh, needs to be take, taken care of because uh, it can lead to traction later on. All blind eyes need to be enucleated to avoid sympathetic ophthalmia. Physical activity should be severely restricted after trauma to avoid RD. So the various types of trauma involving the posterior segment can be contusion injuries which can be closed globe, zone 2 or zone 3. Open globe injuries can be penetrating injuries, perforating injuries or the IOBs. They can be traumatic endophthalmitis. So ensure absence of any life threatening injuries in these patients. Provide first aid, detailed history, classify the injury and plan management. Inform the surgical team. Uh, you have to see pre-operatively for any subconjunctival pigment, conjunctival chemosis, I have already covered this. So prevent further tissue damage, wound closure is the most important thing. Early meticulous and incarceration free wound closure, closure is key. So prevent and manage endophthalmitis, manage intraocular inflammation and remove all acute IOFBs. Primary vitreclectomy is again, you know, not a very uh, easy thing to do. There is risk of endophthalmitis. Uh, retained IOFBs may be there and so materials and manpower for carrying out all techniques should be there, media clarity has to be there, traumatic and ophthalmitis we just heard Dr. Narendra's talk. So why it's not well established because there can be severe vitreous and supracoroidal hemorrhage and primary vitreotomy may just worsen the situation, you may lose the eye. And small self-sealed exit wounds may be there which you may just explore and kind of unearth and create uh, you know, more devastation. There may be retinal incarceration and anterior segment inflammation may just not allow you to do primary vitrectomy. Two-step approach is the more commonly uh, used approach. Primary wound repair and profile access for endophthalmitis, reassess. Definitive management is planned at 8 to 14 days by following serial ultrasounds. Discuss the risk of sympathetic ophthalmia and eyes not salvageable. So general anesthesia is the preferred modality. Avoid any pressure on the globe. Use close as as you go technique. Use cautery on the scleral surface and use the zipper technique to close scleral wounds. So meticulous and prompt wound closure for the sclera. Sutured using zeogenics technique. All scleral tears extending up to muscle insertion need to be explored for extension under the muscle. So the muscle has to be disinserted and you have to do a meticulous search for the operation going posteriorly. Rule out IOB in all eyes hit with a projectile or unknown mechanism or circumstances. Clear all media opacities. May you need to use temporary keratoprosthesis, this is wide angle viewing systems. Watch the cannula tip carefully. This is very important because you may be just infusing it supracoroidally. Large retinotomies and retinectomies are preferred. Remove as much as it is gel as possible. Isolate all the incarcerated tissues. Use intraocular diathermy. Use PSCL to remove subretinal blood and stabilize the retina. Silicon oil tamponade is preferred. Do endolaser all around the buccal vitreous base and the retinal breaks. So these were some of the success reported. Uh, anatomic success 52 to 73 percent, and visual acuity was more than 5 by 240 percent in cases. So these are some of the post-op pictures which may be possible after these uh, interventions. So there is scope for research because all principles of treatment are based on anecdotal, retrospective and experimental studies, no prospective randomized studies except you in endophthalmitis and agents and types of injuries are local issues. It can be due to hypodermic needles, bully gunna in India, bow and arrow, crit balls, crackers etc.
no substitute for history and perseverance. So this was a small uh, girl who uh, had just a subtle uh, drop in vision. And patient's father stated that she was watching the roadside laborers work at work when she got the injury and immediately later on a foreign body was found. So prevention is also a very important aspect. Working with the chemicals, you must read instructions carefully, use gloves, workplace, you must use safety eyewear, point spray nozzles away from you and wear protective goggles. This is an aspect which is very much neglected in India. Store poisons in locked cupboards. Sports, very important to wear protective glasses while wear, uh, playing especially racket sports. 90% of these injuries are preventable. So I just uh, uh, display a small video of this is uh, a primary repair being done and uh, we can take up questions also. So the basic idea is that uh, we have to expose the uh, perforation I'm sorry about the clarity of this video it's not the resolution is not very good Close as you go. Do not just keep exposing because you know if you just keep exposing, the whole eyeball may just collapse and the contents may just come out. So as you keep exposing, you have to keep suturing and keep securing the eyeball. has to be hooked and just may carefully have to see that if the perforation is going posterior to the muscle the muscle hooking has to be very gentle because uh, you know you just that pressure may just extrude the content so if you have to be very careful in that Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Solo.